untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu Reanimator deck titled Trash Trove, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features four copies of Triumphant Reckoning from the latest anthology expansion, a 9 mana mythic rare sorcery saying, return all artifact, enchantment and planeswalker cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. So how are we planning on casting Triumphant Reckoning? We're not going to use traditional methods, instead we can count on Scholar of the Lost Trove, a 7 mana 5-5 five five Sphinx with flying, and when Scholar enters a battlefield we may cast, target instant, sorcery or artifact card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. So by reanimating our Scholar of the Lost Trove with our various reanimation effects, we can potentially cast our Triumphant Reckoning from the graveyard, which will then get back every other creature and enchantment, since we don't have any planeswalkers, and one of those creatures is Combustible Gearhulk, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six artifact creature construct with first strike, and when the Gearhulk enters a battlefield, target opponent may have us draw 3 cards, and if they don't, instead we mill 3 cards and then Gearhulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. And if you take a look at our deck here, the average convert mana cost of the deck is quite high. In fact, including our lands, the average cost of our cards is equal to 4, meaning that Gear Hulk can count on about 12 damage, and an unsuspecting opponent could just get one hit KO'd by our Gear Hulk, which definitely happened before. And then we also have the full playset of Overwhelming Splendor as an enchantment we can get back with our Triumphant Reckoning. It's an 8 mana enchantment aura curse that enchants our opponent, and creatures enchanted player controls lose all ability and have base power and toughness 1-1, and the enchanted player cannot activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. So Overwhelming Splendor, another very powerful card we can get back out of the graveyard, including with our Rise to Glory, which for 5 mana chooses one or both between returning a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and returning target aura card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this can get back our Overwhelming Splendor, which also counts as an aura. So that's another powerful combo that our deck is capable of. And then we also have four copies of Emeria's Call as part of our mana base, as another expensive card we can potentially hit with our Combustible Gearhulk, and it's also a nice card we can use as an alternate win condition in the late game. And then our final expensive card here is Discovery Dispersal, which actually is just a two-drop in this deck since we're only interested in the Discovery half, which lets us surveil to end and draw card, because the total converted mana cost of split cards is the sum of both halves, so this has a total converted mana cost of seven. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at two mana we've got more draw discard effects with the full playset of Cathartic Reunion. As an additional cost we have to discard two to draw three, so we can get rid of all this stuff that we want to have in our graveyard, and hopefully draw into our reanimation effect, as well as two copies of Thrill of Possibility, which does the same. And then we have the full playset of Anger of the Gods as our interactive spell of choice, dealing three damage to each creature and also exiling them. So this can help us buy time against aggressive decks and is also a nice way to clean up all the opponent's creatures after we get an overwhelming splendor in play, since they'll all turn into one ones that we can then clean up with our Anger of the Gods to clear a path for Combustible Gearhulk. Then we also have two copies of Heartwarming Redemption, a four mana instant saying discard all the cards in your hand, and then we get to draw that many cards plus one and we gain life equal to the number of cards in our hand. So we get to discard our hand and put a ton of stuff in the graveyard, and the added life gain usually buys us an extra turn to make use of all those cards in the graveyard. And then we have six reanimation effects with two copies of Rise to Glory, which of course is very synergistic with our overwhelming splendor, as well as the full playset of Unburial Rites, which we're also happy to discard because then we get Get to flash it back out of the graveyard for just four mana so that can potentially set up a turn four reanimation effect already and then of course we can also potentially chain together a whole bunch of reanimation effects with our scholar of the lost trove which can get back additional scholars which in turn get back more reanimation effects and scholar of the lost trove can also get back our combustible gear hulk which counts as an artifact so that's another neat synergy between the two cards and then going over the rest of our mana base, besides our four copies of Emerio's Call, we also have four of the Savai Triome, four copies of Blood Crypt, which enters untapped at the cost of two life, and then eight pathways with the black red one, the red white one, and two basic mountains in case of Field of Ruin. So we don't have any blue mana to hardcast Scholar of the Lost Trove, although every now and then we'll hardcast our Combustible Gear Hulk. And then we have about 18 red sources to potentially cast our Anger of the Gods on turn 3, which is quite important. And then about 12 black and white, which is enough to cast the rest of our spells. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck, so probably not the best matchup for Anger of the Gods, but we can easily discard it with our Redemption, so I'll try it. So, just want to hit our land drops and put some stuff in the graveyard. Opponent's black whites and a Charming Prince, so this is maybe a Doom Foretold deck. So I could Cathartic Reunion, but I prefer casting Reunion if I have two cards I actively want to discard. So I might go for Discovery first. And then don't need Anger, but I will take an extra land. So next turn I could Cathartic Reunion, discarding maybe Splendor Anger, although we're most likely going to Redemption on 4. It's going to be a Treacherous Blessing, so definitely points towards Doom Foretold. Yeah, I mean, I could also Cathartic, discarding Blood Crypt here and Splendor. All right, so definitely more cards I don't mind discarding. And we'll just play this as a red source. And then this can make white for redemption next turn. And then we're just trying to draw into a reanimation effect as our opponent puts Yorion in hand. And discards a planes to hand size. So play a white source, pass a turn. And we'll take two. There's Yurion, which is gonna flicker Charming Prince and Blessing, so they can keep drawing more cards. Although eventually Overwhelming Splendor will shut down all these synergies. Alright, we found an Unburial Rites. So we can get back Scholar, which can get back our Combustible Gearhold perhaps. Is that the best we can do? Sounds about right here. And then I want to play an extra white source so we can eventually hard cast our Emirios Call as well. And could also go for Emirios Call here over Gear Hulk, but Gear Hulk is more fun. Right, we get to draw three. And drawing this many cards is actually a good thing because that makes it easier to discard to hand size and set up our future reanimation effects. And now Rise to Glory can reanimate both a creature as well as our aura. So next turn we can Rise to Glory, getting back Scholar, which gets back Gear Hulk, as well as Overwhelming Splendor. Final payment on the Gearhulk, that's fine. Blessing comes back to draw more cards. And our opponent has to discard again. Alright, Triumphant Reckoning also one I wouldn't mind discarding. So I guess what I can do is Thrill discarding Reckoning and then get back Scholar that way. I could attack first, but I guess I might as well turn this into a 1-1 one, one first. So, yeah, let's uh, Thrill, Discarding, Triumphant Reckoning. And Unburial Rites on Scholar. Which will get back Reckoning. And enchant our opponent with a curse. Two Gearhulk triggers, 
opponent's probably gonna let us draw six since otherwise they risk getting boinked. All right, opponent took uh, 12 to the face and concedes before the second trigger resolved. Still got to attack for five here, so our opponent was just dead on board. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is missing a few elements, but it has potential if we draw into a Sphinx of the Lost Trove in our first couple draw steps. The second reunion, pretty important as well. First one can maybe discard Rites and Reckoning. Ooh, nice. There's color, so... Let's see, I probably want a white source for right, so we'll play this as red. And then Reunion can first discard rights and Scholar to set up a turn for rights. Up against a blue-white deck with strategic planning, maybe this is a Godfather's Gift deck. As we see, the namesake card and an Angel of Invention, so turn 4, they can potentially refurbish that. For now, we'll Reunion and set up our own Graveyard Synergies. Redemption could also be great to put more stuff in the graveyard, although currently no additional creatures to discard. Although we should be able to get back a Scholar on turn 4 at least, which can get back Reckoning, so any additional creatures and or enchantments we find here are going to be very useful. Shard of course. And there's Overwhelming Splendor, perfect, so Reunion discard Splendor Reckoning. Still need an extra land, but there it is. Oh man, I wish we could wait an extra turn on Redemption, don't know if we'll have time for it. But if I can Redemption first, then we get back double Gear Hulk as well. But it looks like a Refurbish is already happening. So that doesn't buy us a ton of time as Dream Trawler attacks. Opponent's probably not playing too many counter spells, so that's not a real concern. Yeah, you know what, let's go big. And then... End of turn, I can Redemption. And then my Scholar's gonna be even more impressive. Opponent can discard stuff to the Dream Trawler just as a discard outlet gets back a second Dream Trawler. That's fine. They're gonna lose all their abilities soon. Another strategic planning to fill the graveyard. And Redemption will also gain us a bunch of life here, so we should be relatively safe. Double Dream Trawler. So that's hitting us for 13. And it's time for Redemption. As we see a search for Ascanta hit the battlefield as well. Discard our entire hand and Imperial Rites can be cast out of the graveyard, so that's not a concern. Back up to 9. And it's time for Imperial Rites. Which gets back Triumphant Reckoning. Target our opponent with our curse. Double Gear Hulk triggers. We'll see if they take the damage or if we get to draw more cards. Opponent takes the damage, just five on the first one. And a little bit more on the second. So our opponent's got two 1-1 one, one Dream Trawlers. Can probably handle those. Ooh, Platinum Angel. Good thing we have a Splendor to remove its abilities. 
cast out. All right, that deals with our splendor. Although we do have another one in hand. So are we dead to our opponent getting back Angel of Invention? I think we are, since that'll pump both Dream Trawlers. Yeah, Cast Out got us pretty good. Sadly, didn't have a second Splendor in the graveyard for additional insurance. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with what looks like a reasonable hand. Still need to draw into a creature to reanimate, but I can put rights and reckoning in the graveyard, and we have anger as interaction in case we're up against a more aggressive creature deck, and then play this as an extra red source. Turn one snow covered mountain into Gitu Lava Runner, so. Anger of the Gods is going to come in handy. Don't need more than one Reckoning. Right, lands are good, so I can Anger if I really have to, or we can just go Triome plus Discovery and try to put more stuff in the graveyard. Turn to Robber of the Rich. Exiles Discovery Dispersal. Yeah, we'll Discovery again. And Redemption. I don't really mind to just refresh my hands after we maybe Anger of the Gods. And then a land I can keep on top for Robber of the Rich. Pyromancer puts us to 15. Alright, so we're down to 10. Time to anger. Might as well keep Emerio's Call in the graveyard so we can maybe cast it with a Skull of the Lost Trove at some point. So. Yeah, no creatures to get back yet. Could Redemption main phase to potentially play Tapland afterwards. Alright, play this tapped. And then I can discard Overwhelming Splendor and eventually Rise to Glory it back. Not the fastest sequence, still haven't found any creatures, sadly. Although we could Redemption again, which just buys us more time here. Another Pyromancer, so we're at 8. So now I might... Redemption main phase, so I can still potentially find a land and another 2-mana discard effect to set up my Unburial Rites. And there's Scholar and a Cathartic Reunion, perfect, so we're all set for next turn. Get to Burial Rite, Scholar. And get everything back. Down to 10. And yeah, it's go time here. I guess I could Cathartic first just to put an extra Splendor in the graveyard, not that it matters. Opponent is looking through our graveyard, trying to piece together what's going on. Alright, time for rights. Get back Scholar. Which gets back Reckoning. And Gearhulk triggers. 
Next turn I can maybe discard Scholar and reanimate it, getting back another Redemption for life gain. Or maybe a Mirror Skull if we want more pressure. Opponent decided to take the damage and ended up taking a whopping 15. Opponent takes their draw step and concedes. So yeah, pretty sweet game here against Monorad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Just need to draw into a reanimation effect at some point. Can Reunion first, I think. Discarding Scholar and Splendor. Which are both cards I don't mind getting rid of. And then probably want a second red source in case we need Anger of the Gods. There's Anger, although their opponent doesn't seem particularly aggressive. And opponent's gonna foretell a card. Could thrill end of turn, just to kind of wait it out and see what our opponent's up to. Although I'm probably getting rid of another Splendor here. Opponent passes. Another Anger. Alright, Discovery's good. And then Unburial Rites. I probably want to just draw, since we get to cast it twice in case of any counter spells. And next turn we're gonna have 5 mana anyway. And we'll keep Emeria Skull in hand, since we're maybe gonna hard cast it this game. Opponent cycles a Shark Typhoon. And then next turn we can get back Scholar. Not sure yet what else we're gonna cast out of the graveyard. It's a Fairy Master of Time. It's gonna draw and then discard. Redemption's also interesting. Could Redemption to set up an even better reanimation turn, but I think getting the Scholar here is probably already quite strong. And then could go for Cathartic Reunion, discarding maybe Anger Gearhulk. That seems okay. Could also hard cast Gear Hulk next turn, but reanimating it might be more mana efficient. Alright. So the next creature I reanimate could potentially cast Reckoning as well. As our opponent pluses the fairy once again. Alright, let's see how they handle our 5-5 five, five flyer in the meantime. I do love a good puzzle. Discards Valky and Binding gonna destroy Scholar. Fair enough. So now I could Thrill discarding Reckoning and then Unburial rides the Scholar that just died, which will be able to cast Reckoning. Don't really hate that idea. And then we get back Gear Hulk as well as Double Splendor. Sure. And we'll see what they decide on the Gearhulk. Do they take the risk after seeing so many expensive cards? It's a 
fairy gonna minus on gear hulk that's fine the so damage is still gonna happen and her opponent took 19 damage to the face double discovery dispersal and unburial rights so that's gonna hurt can set up another Imperial Rites for next turn by discarding Scholar and Emiria Skull, and then we can cast the Emiria Skull with our Scholar potentially. And our opponent decides to explode instead. So yeah, you gotta be careful with Combustible Gearhulk, because you never know when it's just gonna kill you on the spot. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? got both Reunion and Thrill, so we do get to see a lot of new cards. We'll try it. And then for now, probably start with Thrill, since I don't have more than one card I want to discard. Dread Wanderers, so finding Anger of the Gods probably going to be pretty good here. We can thrill end of turn. Scrap heap scrounger, another target for anger. Alright, now we can write discarding. Alright, now we can reunion discarding rights and scholar. And there's Anger of the Gods for next turn. And if they make us discard it with the Thoughtseize, we can still Unburial Rites back our Scholar, which can also cast Anger of the Gods out of the graveyard. So this might be a Death Shadow deck, seeing all these Pain Lands. And it's going to be a Thought Seize, taking away Anger, and we draw another one. So I could Anger, or I could Reanimate Scholar and cast Anger. I think I'd rather just cast Anger in hand. Play this one tapped. Spawn of Mayhem, 4-4 four, four Flyer, pick up a Reunion. So, could go for Scholar, casts Cathartic Reunion out of the graveyard. It's probably worth it here to stem the bleeding. And then get rid of... Probably just two lands, to be honest. Alright, Overwhelming Splendor, a nice one to get in the graveyards. And then potentially reanimate with Rise to Glory. And that'll shrink down all the opponent's creatures. Scrap Heap. And no attack. So, don't want a redemption since we need Rise to Glory as a reanimation effect, but I can Cathartic Reunion here, or maybe start with Discovery. And that maybe find something else we can discard to a Reunion. Anger can go. Thrill I could keep. And then Splendor and Blood Crypt can go, keep my Redemption in hand as a bit of life gain potentially. Alright, and then do I want to play Miria's Call or keep it as a spell? Can probably play Tapped here. And 
and then I'm fine if the scholar dies since I'll get it back with Rise to Glory anyway. Haven't been able to find another creature so far. Demonic Embrace Scrap Heap, now a 6-3 flyer. So this will prevent a bit more damage. Right, another flyer, so I can thrill Discarding Scholar. And then Rise to Glory, I guess, can also cast her Triumphant Reckoning, which will be even better. Or I guess some Burial Rites will do just fine here. Target opponent with a curse. And now they just control a 2-2. Can give it flying with the Demonic Embrace, but then we can still block. Probably got a little bit too excited to cast my Triumphant Reckoning. Could have reanimated a second Scholar of the Lost Trove by using Unburial Rites first. That way we would have had an extra 5-5 flyer. Although this way we do keep Unburial Rites in the graveyard, which I guess can be useful if we end up casting Redemption. All right, time for redemption, I think. That seems okay. Bring back Scholar which is going to bring back even more stuff, and our opponent sees a writing on the wall and explodes. So yeah, overall, this Mardu Reanimator deck, definitely pretty janky, doesn't always work out, but it is capable of doing some impressive things, and it's always fun when the opponent doesn't play around Combustible Gearhog, dealing them a ton of damage, and you get to win out of nowhere. So definitely a fun one, but probably not for the competitive cues. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.